வெல்கம் பேக் இந்த லாஸ்ட் கிளாஸ் ஐ இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் தி டர்ம் கால் பல்க் மேக்னடைசேஷன் விச் ஐ சேட் இஸ் தி பாப்புலேஷன் டிஃபரன்ஸ் பிட்வீன் தி ஆல்ஃபா அண்ட் பீட்டா ஸ்பின் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் டு டு ரேண்டம் ஃபேஸ் அப்ராக்சிமேஷன் வேர் தி காம்போனன்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் மேக் ஈச் இண்டிவிஜுவல் மேக்னடிக் மொமெண்ட்ஸ் in the x and y direction then in the xy plane that mx and my components of this individual magnetic moments gets averaged out all this gets averaged out as a consequence there is no magnetization in the xy plane because of random phase approximation finally what we are going to be left with is the is the vector rotation of the magnetic moments or all the magnetic moments oriented in this direction in the direction of the field and vector addition of all the magnetic moments oriented in the direction opposite opposite to that of the magnetic field and because of the boltzmann distribution because of the population the excess of spins in the direction of the magnetic field the vector addition of these two orientations in the along the z and minus z direction will be giving a net polarization or net magnetization or net vector in this direction this was called bulk magnetization which is which is represented as m not is a nomenclature m not is the bulk magnetization which is along the z axis we can treat it like a small tiny magnet bulk magnetization we can treat as a small tiny magnet remember when we are dealing with the individual spin we use the term magnetic moment when i am taking the vector addition of all of them i am talking about what is called bulk magnetization which is a tiny magnet now let us understand how what happens to this bulk magnetization how it is oriented look at it even in thermal equilibrium we are talking about thermal equilibrium in thermal equilibrium because of the random phase approximation and all all the vector addition we did we have got the magnetization along z axis this bulk magnetization is parallel to the static field and is also static this bulk magnetization is stationary even in thermal equilibrium at thermal equilibrium mx component of the bulk magnetization and my components are zero even this bulk magnetization now i can resolve into x and y component now mx and y components are zero only we have m0 and it is stationary so i this is called also called mz magnetization because x y x and y components are zero and this is nothing but the magnitude of this magnetization which is called m0 are also called equilibrium magnetization all these are nomenclatures terminologies so the bulk magnetization is called mz or equilibrium magnetization m0 or also sometimes they call it meq meq or m0 or mz doesn't matter all are same in thermal equilibrium one point you must remember is even in thermal equilibrium this bulk magnetization is static and aligned along the z axis perfectly aligned along the z axis okay now we have to do one small trick what is this small trick i have to detect the nmr signal now it is a static thing okay unless i perturb this magnetization bulk magnetization i cannot see the signal i need to perturb this bulk magnetization how do i do that so this you can achieve by applying oscillating field in the direction of the bulk magnetization in a direction sorry not direction of the bulk in a direction perpendicular to the bulk magnetization please remember you have to apply in the direction perpendicular to the bulk magnetization what does it mean bulk magnetization is along z axis so you have to apply a the oscillating field in a direction either x axis or y axis because magnetization m0 mz is along z axis that's what you have to do and what is this oscillating field what should be the oscillating field remember we said about inducing resonance we have to apply radio frequency falls at the larmer frequency right 
for getting the resonance exactly the frequency of the oscillations of this one oscillating field you are you are having a oscillating field its frequency should match with the larmer frequency larmer frequency is what the precision frequency of the spins so that one should match the, with the oscillating frequency which you are going to apply here you are going to apply like this when it matches then we are going to get a resonance in other words gamma into b not should be equal to gamma into b1 b not is what is called the strong magnetic field which you are going to which is the resonance condition what we got here so now when you apply radio frequency pulse this is the this is called a b1 field and this frequency is gamma into b1 so gamma into b1 must be equal to gamma into b not this is the resonance condition and when this condition is met what you are going to do is you will tilt the bulk magnetization from z axis to x or y axis of course you are applying in this axis you will tilt it in this axis if you are applying in this direction you will tilt it in the, this axis we will worry about this by using what is called the right hand thumb rule how it is tilted later but just remember when you apply radio frequency pulse radio, radio frequency which is oscillating at the larmer frequency you are perturbing the z magnetization which is in thermal equilibrium and then the, you are tilting the magnetization to other axis if you are applying a like x axis you will tilt it to y axis or vice versa and then we can start detecting the signal this is how we detect this nmr signal in the bulk magnetization concept i am explaining most important point to remember the stationary magnetic field if you apply in a direction perpendicular to b not you will not get the precision you, you will not it will not interact with the bulk magnetization stationary field will not the rf which you are going to apply in a perpendicular direction must be oscillating if it is not oscillating it will not perturb the magnetic perturb the spin system at all so it is not perturbed so you will not be able to see any signal at all <clears throat> so what we do what we understand now is application of an electromagnetic radiation at the larmer frequency creates a non equilibrium situation the spins which were in thermal equilibrium or mag bulk magnetization which was in thermal equilibrium is disturbed you are creating a non equilibrium situation okay now what is going to happen when you send a radio frequency signal it has an interaction how does it interact you have electromagnetic radiation that is rf rf at the larmer frequency you apply remember electromagnetic radiation has both electric component and magnetic component electric component has no effect at all it doesn't disturb the spins on the other hand the magnetic component of the radio frequency interacts with the magnetization because remember rf when you apply it like a small magnet it is a magnetic component and magnetization is we are discussing all about magnetism okay now it is like bringing a, another magnet to a tiny magnet which is the bulk magnetization so bringing one more magnet close by then what will happen these two will interact exactly what happens when you apply radio frequency signal rf pulse in a direction perpendicular to the bulk magnetization then a magnetic component of rf interacts with it and causes disturbance it creates a non equilibrium situation okay now what happens to the bulk magnetization at non equilibrium state at non equilibrium remember bulk magnetization and is undergoing precision like this and non equilibrium at, at equilibrium it was static mz equal to m not so now m is not aligned along b not m is constantly changing so mx and my oscillate as a consequence of precision now mx and my components i would say is non zero in when the earlier situation in thermal equilibrium it was in a equilibrium condition the bulk magnetization was along z axis it was along z axis and mx my components were zero 
But in the non-equilibrium situation, these two are non-zero because of the constant rotation of the bulk magnetization, the Mx and My also oscillate. And Mz is no more aligned along Z and it is not equilibrium magnetization because Mz has a different component now. It is not thermal, what was Mz is not equal to M0. They are different now. So you, have, you understood the trick what we did. We understood what is a bulk magnetization. We know it is static at thermal equilibrium. You disturb it by radio frequency pulse at larmor frequency. Then what happens in the non-equilibrium condition? We have we resolve this bulk magnetization M into three components, Mx, My, and Mz. Now Mx and My is oscillating because it is changing. It is in the non-equilibrium situation, and Mz is not equal to M0. So we have to calculate that. With that. Now I want to introduce a concept of rotating frame very mildly because I'm not going to the extensive key. mathematics for it. You require that to understand, but in a simple way, let us try to understand. This is required to many, many experimental conditions. We talk about rotating frame, rotating frame over as a effect, all those things. You should have some idea about what is a rotating frame and how it is used, the concept of rotating frame in an MR. Okay. Now, consider the situation. B1 RF field is oscillating with a frequency, omega grant is equal to gamma into B0. We are applying a radio frequency pulse, which is oscillating with a frequency which is equal to omega naught frequency. That's what we said to induce resonance. Now, let us see what is an oscillating field. An oscillating wave is like this. You know that what is an oscillating wave. It is represented mathematically by this equation. Why is component is this? Why has a B1 cos omega naught t? What is the B1? It's an amplitude. And oscillating frequency is given by omega zero. So any frequency you can take. I, we have just chosen some number here. This is the oscillating frequency. Okay, you can calculate from the, uh, this is the lambda from which you can calculate what is frequency. Okay, fine. This is the concept of a oscillating wave. Now, what happens while it is undergoing motion, this wave will have different phases with time. What happens? Remember, it starts along y axis. When it is along y axis, the amplitude is maximum and it, its value varies with the value of theta. Let us see what it is. It starts, let us say, along y axis. It is a maximum value. Amplitude is maximum. Okay, at, at theta is equal to zero, cos zero. Let us say this one. This t is zero. Uh, we are talking about time now. At time t is equal to zero, it is cosine of zero is one. So the uh, y is maximum amplitude, b one, right? Now as as it keeps moving, what happens? It comes here. It is a situation. It is. This is pi by 4, pi by 2, 2 pi, and 3 pi by 2. And then, like, finally, it becomes 2 pi. It is oscillating like this. So what happens? The y component is 1, becomes 0, minus 1, 0, plus 1. What is happening? The y component is going through y, x, minus y, and x axis. See? It is going through y. Then you look at this one. I have to show you the circular one. The y component as a function of theta, what happens? It will be y comes to x minus y minus x and go back to y. The same thing you can see represented in the form of a wave as a function of theta. And amplitude is varying from 1, 0, minus 1, and 0. So the wave is oscillating. And going through all the amplitude values, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, in one cycle. And in one cycle, it goes through, starting with plus y axis, goes to x, minus y, and x. That means we can represent this oscillating wave as a circle. Right? That's what we said in the conceptual understanding. It is maximum amplitude is here for theta is equal to 0. 
when theta is equal to pi by 2, theta is equal to 90 degree, this value is here, y component is 0, it, but it is along x axis, then y equal to minus 1 along my, minus y axis, when y equal to again 0 at 270, it is minus x, go back. So I am representing the wave in the form of a circle. Let us say at any given instant of time, this is the place we are we are looking at this place, this point. I know this angle theta. Then I can resolve this into two components, x and y. This is a cosine component, the sine component. I can resolve it. So this amplitude is maximum here. Okay, at y component zero. I'm sorry, zero maximum. Like this, you can work out what happens to the what happens to the function of theta. When theta, in other words, we have written is the same amplitude equation, y wave equation in the in terms of amplitude and this frequency is represented as b1 cos theta, let us say. Now, what is happening to this one as a function of theta? When theta is equal to zero, it is here. When theta is equal to 90, it is here. Now you can look, find out the components. When theta is equal to 45 degree, it is here. It is a vector. It resolve into this component and this component. So you can have cosine component and sine component both, like here. I didn't mention that. Okay, doesn't matter. You can resolve them into cosine and sine components. Now, before the application of pulse, let us understand what is happening to the spins. Spins are rotating along z axis. Remember, it is there. this is how it's, the spins are rotating. That's what the precession we are talking. Individual magnetic moments are precessing along z axis. Making an angle theta. This theta I know for two orientations of spin of nuclei. Along this axis and also it rotates along this axis. Okay. Keeps rotating like this. Now when you apply a radio frequency pulse, you bring the magnetization along y axis. That is I am applying along x axis. Bring the magnetization along y axis. Then it starts rotating in the xy plane. Okay, imagine uh, it is along z axis here. You bring to, let us say, x axis and you start rotating in this x y plane. Okay, that's what is happening. And if the rotating frequency of the spin matches with the oscillating frequency of the radio frequency which you apply, we call it on resonance. See, now in the x y plane, the spins are rotating. This frequency when it matches exactly with the applied frequency of, that is RF pulse, external radiation which you applied in the direction perpendicular, when it matches, which is on resonance, then you are in the XY plane. Understand? This is a situation when you say we have entered into a frame called rotating frame. In the rotating frame, we always say the spins appear stationary. What does it mean? In this means, if, if you are in this laboratory frame, along the z-axis, the spins are processing. But when I go to the x-y axis, x, in the spins which are rotating in this x-y plane, I sit into that, in that plane, in the x-y axis, and look at the spins, it appears stationary. That means from the laboratory frame, you move to a frame where the spins are rotating. This is a rotating frame of reference. When you move to that frame of reference, for you, the spins are stationary. They are not moving. It is only conceptual understanding, but don't enter the, be under the impression spins are not spinning. They are spinning. But it is conceptually, mathematically, you can understand when you are sitting here, you won't feel it as moving. Okay? Whereas when you are here, you can see the mo motion. For example, see a merry-go-round. In the merry-go-round, if you are standing outside the merry-go-round, you can see merry-go-round is going. But you go yourself into the merry-go-round. You will not see merry-go-round rotating because you are rotating with the merry-go-round. As far as you are concerned, you don't see merry-go-round rotating. It is stationary. As far as you are concerned, you are rotating with the merry-go-round and for you it is stationary. You don't see rotation of the merry-go-round. Similar to that, when you are in the rotating frame of reference, you will not see spins rotating. You will see Spins are not processing, they are stationary. Okay. Now, what do you mean by spins are stationary? It is precision frequency zero. So I put nu is equal to zero. 
What is my resonance condition? My resonance condition is nu is equal to gamma into b naught over 2 pi. I am going to put nu 0. I am assuming this is my condition because spins are stationary. When this is 0, this is constant. I don't deal with that. This is constant. This is constant. I cannot play with these numbers, these three parameters. Then what does it mean? When nu is 0, you are making b naught 0. That is the only thing you can vary. You cannot vary. These are constant terms. That means in this rotating frame, when the spins are stationary, you feel main magnetic field B naught is removed. You, it is zero. You feel as if you have not applied, the spins feel as if you have not applied the external magnetic field in the rotating frame. So what does it mean? Earlier, the spins were processing along Z axis, processing in the direction of the main magnetic field. Now that is absent, but they are processing along the oscillating field. That is this oscillating RF which you are applied, which you have applied in the direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. That field is called a B1 field. What is this B1 field? This is that magnetic field of several Tesla we can we have not applied, which is a small RF, small pulse we apply. And this field, if you calculate, this is of the order of a much, much smaller, so much, let us say of the order, in if I want to express in frequency, it is about 25 to 30, kilo, 30 kilohertz will be there. Whereas, the same thing in B0, if you express in a frequency, it is 500 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. Remember, 500 megahertz are 30 kilohertz difference. It is a very small field we apply. The B1 field is and several orders are millions, at least 10 to the power of 6, smaller than that of main magnetic field. So spins now see only B1 as a stationary field. This not B0 as a field, B the spin sees as a as if you have applied external field is B1 as a stationary field and start rotating around B1. This value is so small, much, much smaller compared to B0 field. You have a concept of the spin field which you are going to apply, RF pulse, when you apply, you calculate the frequency. It is of the order of 20 to 30 kilohertz. Please remember the field is 600 to 500,000 megahertz. That is the resonating frequency for fields in Tesla. This is few hertz, few kilohertz, 20, 25, 30 kilohertz. So that is a very small field we apply. So what we did is, essentially, we have tilted the static field, we static bulk magnetization from Z axis to X, Y axis. And depending upon which direction you are applying the pulse. Okay. So if you are applying along X axis, you can bring along Y axis. If you are applying along Y axis, you can bring the magnetization to X axis. Exact directions we will discuss when we talk about the phases of the pulses and the NMR signal. Okay. Are you understanding? Is it clear for you? So it means in the B1 magnetic field, we are worried about the precision frequency around B1. Then we are not worried about the frequency of the order of megahertz, we are worried about the rotational frequency or precision frequency of the order of few kilohertz. So B1 field, when you apply, it is for a short duration of microsecond to milliseconds, very, very small value, 55 microsecond, 10 microsecond. In some special examples, we apply one millisecond like that. Don't worry. But we consider most of the time for excitation pulse, for excitation of the spins, we apply only five microsecond for the to disturb the spins from non-equilibrium situation, uh, from equilibrium to non-equilibrium situation, we apply only microsecond pulse. Okay. And this is called short burst of RF, also called RF pulse. RF pulse is nothing but a burst of RF, short pulse. For a microsecond, you apply, like a, you are giving a quick shot, like tuck, you will send one pulse for a microsecond. First, apply and keep going. That's all you do, like a flash. You are flashing the RF pulse for a microsecond, 5 microsecond once and keep going. After some time, you can apply once and keep going. That is like flashing, sending the burst of RF in flashes. Okay, that's what is we do. Then magnetization is precising along around B1. Now the precision frequency is gamma B1, not gamma B0. Right? So you are in the rotating frame. Now precision frequency is omega 1, which is equal to gamma into B1. Okay, and this is 
typically 1 millionth of the strength of B naught. As a consequence, precision frequency you can talk now in terms of kilohertz or hertz rather than megahertz. Then it is easy to handle and understand the things much better. Okay, this is how the concept of rotating frame is introduced in it and it is very useful in NMR. <laughs> now understand three important points about the rotating frame. First point, the effect of the main magnetic field is disappeared in the rotating frame. You, do, you will you feel as if B naught, the spins feel as if B naught is absent. And B1 field is no longer rotating and appears static as far as the spins are concerned. Understand? Earlier spins were rotating or precising along B1, along B naught, before application of the pulse. After application of the pulse, you bring the B0 magnetization to XY plane. In this case, the spins are rotating, starts rotating in this XY plane. So this is a small field compared to the main, main field. When spins are rotating along this axis, this was a static field. Now it is rotating along this axis and this is a static field. This is called P1 field, this is a P0 field. And this is of the order of several Tesla, this is of the order of few kilos, very small value, okay? So magnetization now spins precise around smaller field B0 instead of bigger field B0, B0, okay? So it precises around smaller field B1 instead of bigger field B0. So what happens if the B1 field is not exactly on resonance? When this one matches with this, it is exactly on resonance. You understand? In which case, we are bringing the magnetization exactly from here to XY plane and start rotating like this. In case, if gamma B0 or the application, the RF you applied is not exactly matching with this one, what will happen? When it matches is on resonance, when it's not matching, it is called off resonance condition. Okay? The off resonance condition is one, the rotating frame is locked now along with the B1 field at different frequency. When omega 1 is not equal to omega 0, then what happens? B1 field does not completely disappear in the rotating field. Spins do not, earlier when it is exact and resonance, I said spins field only B1 field, for which B0 main field is 0. Main field assumed to be absent for the spins which are processing in the X-ray plane. But when this condition is not match, it also sees B0. Now it sees, in addition to B1, it is also going to see B0. So there is some residual longitudinal magnetization is also present. And this is given by this equation. It is an equation, you put it, this is a, to work out the frequency in off resonance. When it is, when it is, in non, when it is not in on resonance. So what will be the component of the Z component of the, this thing? If you find out the B, then it is a omega zero minus omega Y divided by gamma. So when omega one equal to omega zero, then it is equal to exactly B naught, that is on resonance. Otherwise it is off resonance. So in the off resonance, vectorially now you take the addition, now instead of being exactly on the X, Y axis, it is somewhere here. Now you have a component of this and component of this. You have to take the vector addition of component along this axis and component along this axis, then you are going to get an effective field along this axis. So this is off resonance. When it is exactly on resonance, it will be along X axis or Y axis. Off resonance is away from this axis and it is a field will be effective field, which is a combination of both, both the main magnetic field and RF field, which you apply. So this is what happens in the case of the uh, off resonance condition, instead of rotating in the XY plane, they rotate in the different axis, making certain angle with respect to this. This is called effective, P effective, okay? So RF field is applied in the form of a short pulse. I said the length and amplitude of the pulse determines how much of equilibrium magnetization tilted from Z axis to XY plane, okay? So now if you want to exactly tilt the pulse to X axis or Y axis, that is by 90 degree from Z axis, 
This is the condition you have to use. Gamma, we know, B1 is the RF power. This is the pulse width. This is called the width of the RF pulse. Width and power put together, you can manipulate to bring the magnetization from Z axis to X axis or Y axis. You can use this. So this is what we want. We know this one. And we have to play with these two terms, RF power and the pulse width. If I have a radio frequency pulse, I'm applying the power of that pulse and the width of the pulse, I can manipulate and bring the magnetization to 90 degrees. If I don't want 90 degree, I can bring it to 180 degree or I can bring it to 45 degree, any angle I want. So this uh, equation helps me to calculate the direction of tilting of the magnetization, magnetization in the direction I want, in the angle I want, or a particular angle I want. So please remember this equation. The length and amplitude of the RF pulse, that is power and width, defines how much of equilibrium magnetization is tilted from Z dx to X Y plane, how, whether it is tilted completely or not. Because if it is tilted completely, entire magnetization is along this axis. If it is tilted 45 degree or let us say, you have to resolve into components. Then only this much magnetization is tilted. The amount of magnetization tilted in the, from the equilibrium position is defined by this pulse and because we can resolve into components and find out how much is the component in this axis. This is an important point. Remember, gamma V1 is the power of the pulse and tau P is the width of the pulse. I can manage this to get the magnetization tilted by any degree to any axis I want. Okay. Okay, next I will tell you more about tilting of the magnetization and then right hand thumb rule, etc. I am going to stop here. I'll come back and we'll continue in the next class more about this so that now you have got the conceptual idea of rotating frame, etc. We'll start talking more about 90 degree, 180 degree, etc. How the magnetization undergoes flipping and discuss further. So I'll stop today.